This AFL on FSN telecast is brought to you by Champs Sports, where you can get all of your team's official Arena Football League merchandise today. Champs Sports, where sport lives. By Las Vegas, home of Arena Bowl 19, Sunday, June 12th. And by the United States Army, an army of one. The CNN Center in the foreground. The Phillips Arena in the background. And we welcome you inside. Georgia up by the dozen on the Rattlers. Eli Gold, Dave Archer, Bo Estes is patrolling the sidelines. And here we go. Fourth period. Rattlers need some points. They need to stop right here to really help things. Kubiak looks in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Troy Bergeron. First boo-boo he's really committed tonight. The hunky Cooper was coming, and he was bringing the noise with him, too. And I think the young receiver <laughs> might have saw the veteran coming. He just hooks up in the zone, sits it down. Kubiak with a good throw, but hunky Cooper was coming. Laid a lick just as the ball got there, but that's a drop for the young receiver. Now, another injury, not to hunky Cooper, but to Nakia Adderson. There's the veteran lineman from Houston limping off. He's already had a left ankle problem this year. He was listed as probable for this game and clearly has played. But Nakia Adderson now limps off, but he is done. Hey, and the injuries to the Rattlers early this season are remarkable. Kubiak finds Todd Doxson along the boards down to the two-yard line. Clarence Lawson stopped him with Hunky Cooper helping. What was the worst spate of injuries you ever had to deal with, Dave, as a, so many years of a quarterback in the NFL and the CFL? I was very lucky. I, I had a shoulder separation, had a dislocated thumb. That was it, And huh? that was pretty much it. I had an wow. ankle operated on, but I was very lucky. A lot of these guys, a lot of my battery mates are limping around today. See how they've really utilized the running game tonight, Georgia has. And again, Robert Thomas is the fullback, but this time they'll throw. If they can find a receiver, going down way back at the 15-yard line. Wendell Gaines with a loss of 12 on the play. But you got to give that Arizona secondary a ton of credit. Joseph Lawson, Gatewood, Taplin do a good job of knocking receivers off, staying with receivers not opening up any holes and allows the pressure to finally get there. Wendell Gaines finally gets to Kubiak. Big old Wendell, second sack of the game for Arizona. Gaines, he scored five touchdowns last year. They loved him for that. A 30-yard kick. Count it right down Peachtree Street. So it goes as a stop in the AFL parlance because the Rattlers didn't get up a TD. But this late in the game, you don't want to give up points at all if you're a Rattler fan. We are back in Atlanta. The Rattlers down by 15 on a beautiful Saturday evening here. Hey, folks, don't forget, coming up a week from tomorrow, next Sunday, NASCAR on Fox returns with the 47th running of the Great American Race. Our NASCAR coverage begins at the Daytona 500 next Sunday in high definition, only on Fox. But pole qualifying tomorrow. They'll set the rest of the field Thursday with the Gatorade duel. Hunky Cooper is deep. Nelson Garner high off the net. Hernandez to the 16-yard line, fumbles the football, but gets it back. Robert Thomas will make the tackle after that 21-yard run back. Now, sometimes you got to feel for the Rattlers. You can't win for winning in a city like that's true the way I said it. Last possession for Georgia, they held the force to a negative four yards. Still end up giving up three points of a factor here late in the ball game. And as you said, as the time starts to tick away, can't afford to give up any points. Need some clean stops. Joe Germain, quarterback, 
In for the injured Cedric Bonner. Pressure. More pressure. Nearly intercepted at midfield. Saya Burley was the intended receiver. He quickly went from being a wide receiver to a DB because Willie Gary would have caught it and run it back. And all of a sudden, Saya said, I can't catch it. I'd better stop the other guy. Well, I think that's exactly right. Uh, a ball that probably Jermaine should throw thrown away. He floated, did a good job of buying himself some time in the pocket. But Burley had to knock away a ball away from Willie Gary. No harm, no foul, but it was close. Burley, Gatewood, Thomas are the receivers. Burley in motion. Gatewood wide open. They play off him significantly to the 14-yard line. Flags are down, however, way back at the line of scrimmage. And that one is coming back. That one is coming back. Take the 18-yard gainer for the Rattlers off the board. You talked about how these two teams have been plagued by penalties in their first two football games. And again, Arizona gets hit. That'll be their seventh of the night. Offensive holding, 82 on the offense. Half the distance remains second down. Anthony Hutch. That'll be their seventh penalty. They're now over 50 yards in penalty yardage. Well, some of that in the AFL is on the quarterback, too. The ball has to come out on time. Jermaine has held the ball a number of times, putting a lot of pressure on his front group. Now, they've stood in there and hung in there quite well, but... This time, Hutchins gets called for grabbing. He came in when Nikia Adderson went out with the recurrence of his ankle injury. Burley on the move. Crossing route, nice catch, Wilson Thomas to the 20-yard line. The rookie out of Nebraska. Big target, as we said earlier, an 11-yard gainer. Willie Gary stopped him. Boy, what an outstanding target. You said it. Six foot six to 195 pounds. Just going to run the square in route. 84 right over in right in the middle of your screen. Does a good job with Gary right on his back to secure the football. Good accurate throw from Joe Germain that time. Most folks figured he'd really be a plus in the red zone. But you use him anywhere you can when you got a good six six guy on a shorter DB. Burley inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. So this has been the route of choice. This is one that Jermaine has a pretty good feel for is that deep square in route. This yep. time Burley working from the slot, a little yo-yo motion, meaning going back and coming straight through, getting a good running start. And you see Burley come into the screen right across the middle. Again, a ball a little thrown behind, but Burley secures it. First down. Indeed, first down on that 12-yard pickup. Saya Burley, 103 catches Time last year. Barry Myricks is adjusting his football shoe. That's why the timeout. Burley had 103 catches last year for better than 1,200 yards. 24 touchdowns. Well, he's got outstanding receiver skills, Eli. He's a guy that protects the football with his body when the throw is behind him. He does a good job of going out and catching the football if it's out in front. So he's the kind of guy from a quarterback perspective, you're willing to throw it up because you know he's going to go get it. Boys and girls, that was not a soup tureen. That was Derry Myrick's big old shoe. <laughs> big feet. Big man. Amen. 6 4, 270 out of the Citadel. Here's Joe Germain looking, and there's a flag. Yep, everybody in the building saw that one. Willie Gary got a piece of Sia Burley. Those who didn't see it, boo. Those who did, threw their hanky. Tough matchup there for Gary. Ends up one-on-one -on, -one on the inside on the feature receiver, Burley. Pass hit appearance, number 23 defense. Half the distance, automatic first down. Of course, Gary is no slouch. He was with the uh, Rams in 2001, their Super Bowl team. Good hard break to the inside, made a little hint to the outside, broke to the inside, and, and Gary was caught flat-footed a little bit by Burley, and, and rather than give up the touchdown, did, a, did the right thing, grabbed the receiver. If you're just joining us, we welcome you in the AFL on FSN in Atlanta, Georgia. Arizona in white, Georgia in blue. Jermaine, nobody in the corner. Willie Gary picks it off. Nobody was there in the corner.
matchup, Willie Gary, the number one tackler on the ball club, has his first interception of the season. Outstanding play by Gary against the 6'6 wide receiver. Arizona did not need that. The Time Force out. fans love what Media. they see. Into the corner. No one home but the guy in blue. Hey, did y'all know that Aaron's is having a sale? It's a dandy. They got mm -hmm. Bridget, right? Whoa. They got a whole. Back here in Atlanta, Joe Germain has just thrown his second interception of the game, and I think he got a little cross with his re with his receiver. He's expecting the deep corner route. Thomas breaks it to the sideline. Watch Thomas break straight out. The ball's thrown to the back corner, so receiver and quarterback were not on the same page there. Results in the Gary interception. That is the fourth stop by Georgia tonight, which in this league, quite frankly, is somewhat unheard of. Two interceptions. Twice they held the Rattlers to field goals. And again, not pointing any fingers, not at all. But the Rattlers miss the injured Cedric Bonner. No question about it. I mean, it's a fact of the matter. Jermaine's a fine quarterback. But Bonner is Bonner for a reason. Nice grab, Chris Johnson, to the 17-yard line. 11 yards on that pickup and a first down. That's another young receiver for this team. I think he's in his third year, but uh, Johnson out of Georgia Southern, but he has not played much. He steps up and has made a couple of real good catches, made a nice play on some special teams. He's going to come from the inside, just breaking straight across the field. Now, he knows he's going to catch this and collision the wall, and he knows Lawson probably going to lay a little lick, too. So good job by the young receivers. Inside of eight and a half remaining, as you see. Lots of movement at the line. Looked like Mark Tucker might have jumped for Arizona. As everybody throws their hankies. If it is a penalty on the Rattlers, it'll be their eighth for 56 yards. Todd Shell will start fighting through the protective padding across the way on the wall. <laughs> He does not abide by those type of penalties. He doesn't mind the aggressive ones. Well, some of them are mental errors. When you jump off sides, it's a mental error. But this seems to be a longer discussion than just a plain old somebody jumped. Illegal formation. Ah. The nose guard was at a two-point stance when the ball was snapped. Five-yard penalty, first down and five. I have the right guy. Uh, and that's a mental error. He knows he's supposed to be in a three-point stance or a four-point stance. Those three down linemen must be in a three-point or four-point stance the snap of the football. And so that's a mental error. There's big number 56, Mark Tucker. Quick release, Parker. The former Rattler spins for another first down. Terrence Joseph and Wilson Thomas on the stop. There's Troy Bergeron. Now up to eight touchdown receptions on the year, David. And I think he's done such a good job against press coverage. You see there winning against the DB right up against him. He does it again here. The high throw, perfect throw from Kubiak. That he's actually made Arizona play softer coverage, which has allowed Kubiak to throw the ball on the edges to his outside receivers. A graduate of AF2, the developmental league, played in Columbus, Georgia with the War Dogs last year. Floating out of the backfield, Jermaine Younger couldn't quite connect with Kubiak. But remember, you see it, the clock just continues to run. 7.13 to go, so even an incompletion in a scenario like this helps Georgia. No question, and uh, again, a, a, a neat little wrinkle there by Coach Thon. Uh, trying to get the ball to Younger slipping out out of the backfield. Good job by Kerry Taylor to shadow him and knock it down, but like you said, Eli, the clock is running. It's the ally of the Georgia Force. There's a run in motion. Flags again. That time the ball never came up to Kubiak. It's picked up by Wilson Thomas. He's going to run it in. But where was the play called dead? There was a change of cadence. That's number one. That was something that brought Arizona jumping off. 
Then the handoff was never cleanly, or the snap was never cleanly consummated. And Wilson Thomas said, when in doubt, pick it up and run, which he did. But you see, referee Wes Fritz brought it back already. Five yards this way, he says, against Arizona. Offside on the defense. 82, lined up offside. Five yard penalty makes it second and five. Well, another another mental error in, in, in uh, coach's book, lining up offside, not necessarily jumping, but actually lining up in the neutral zone. But the reason you see a lot of offsides in this game is because those defensive linemen also see that receiver coming in motion, and they're trying to time their start because they know Kubiak is going to snap that ball just as that receiver hits the line of scrimmage. They're trying to get a quick start also. Nine penalties now on Arizona. A loss of 61 yards. That's a ton in this league. That's a ton in any league. Kubiak hit as he throws, and that one falls harmlessly incomplete. Wendell Gaines and big Nakia Adderson both got in there and deflected away. Watch this pressure. Boy, you talk about Gaines, six foot six, 290 pounds, got the hand on the arm and was able to knock that football down. Good, real good push from Gaines. Now, folks, Wendell Gaines, he played with the Arizona Cardinals for four years, played with the Kansas City Chiefs for a year, played two years with the Philadelphia Eagles. So when you're talking about Wendell Gaines, you're talking about, you know, a, a major leaguer, whether it's indoors or outdoors. He's big time. Nice crossing route. Pretty catch, breaking free, Ricky Parker. He scores again against his former teammates, the Arizona Rattlers. 15 yards to Ricky Parker. Well, this is a big time grab by Ricky Parker. He's gonna run a slant route from the outside, so he's gonna let Troy Bergeron clear, and Parker's gonna come from the left side. Watch for this ball thrown. Behind him, he just reaches back, doesn't break stride, sucks it in and goes into the end zone. Look where this ball's thrown to Parker. Back shoulder, back hip, he's able to pull it in and beat Gatewood for the touchdown. Ricky Parker there, number 20, number two tackler for Arizona last year and only played nine games. He's been to three straight arena bowls with the Rattlers as the extra point is no good. But Ricky Parker came to Georgia with the coach. And he's having himself a game tonight. He had an interception earlier. The touchdown and a comfortable lead. The man on the right, Jim Kubiak, 20 of 28 passing, 247 and four TDs. The guy on the left, Ricky Parker, an interception and a touchdown tonight. Hey, folks, don't forget this week, ACC Hoops returns. The Wolfpack of NC State taking on Georgia Tech's Yellow Jackets. Coverage begins tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Mountain, right here on FSN. Well, that's a big game in the ACC as they start jockeying for position for the ACC tournament. Getting set to begin beating up on each other in the tournament. Uh, the ACC hoops. Tough to beat them. Yeah, NC State has beaten Georgia Tech the last five times, so great matchup. Heard some great basketball being played out in the Pac-10 world this season as well, wherever you're watching. Big time tournament action coming up shortly. Off the hands, off the back wall, that becomes an automatic touchback. Hunky couldn't quite play it, and it goes off his hands and then off the back wall, and that is... By rule, that's a touchback at Arena Football when the ball in the end zone hits the wall. Well, that's a tough proposition for Hunky Cooper. He's expected to hit off the tight net, or the top net, I the guess is the way he puts it. 23 offside, five yards, his first down on the 10. And Garner's able to hit it into the slack net between the two uprights. And Cooper has to adjust to a ball that's going to fall straight down. You heard a penalty on Willie Gary that they marked off as well. So Arizona starts on the 10. Down by 21 with just 419 to go. They need points, then onside kick recovery. Jermaine to Burley. 
never been tackled in bounds until that moment. And he is down at the 20-yard line. Remember, the wall is live. You can use it to change your direction as long as you don't step out. And if you've not been tackled, play continues. Well, we talked about Burley and how valuable he is to any quarterback. And he, here's the, might have got away with stepping on the line there. Eli, but he spun back to the inside. Meanwhile, Jermaine will throw that one away. And, of course, the fans in this league get to keep the ball. Lots of flags on the play, though, back at the 15-yard line. Yep, there's a souvenir going home. But, again, there are flags on the play. Juan Porter came in with a pretty good hit on Jermaine. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 95. A blow to the face mask. 10 yards, automatic first down. Juan Porter, veteran lineman out of Ohio State. Well, there's so many fun things about this league, but one of them is obviously catching the football. It's something you talk about. You go back to work and talk about, take the ball in with you and talk about how fun it was to be in an NFL AFL game. Gatewood near sideline bounces off the wall, but he steps out at the seven. Randy Gatewood down at the seven yard line. And you see at this moment, the clock still runs only inside the final minute of the half. Will the clock stop on out of bounds plays and completions and the like? Another souvenir. Gatewood said, I made the play, but you cannot catch it off the facade of the grandstand. Nice idea, but even this league's rule book doesn't go quite that broad. And I'm not sure Gatewood's ability to get up. You don't think he's got that kind of springs in the legs to go get that one. Another big lick by Wilson put on Jermaine. Georgia continues to get after the passer. And Georgia goes to Las Vegas, the Thomas and Mack Center next weekend to play the Gladiators. Arizona home against the Colorado Crush. Jermaine, hit as he throws, releases, touchdown, Saya Burley. Touchdown, Saya Burley. Jermaine showing some strength right there because he was being held as he let it go. Well, he had a defender on his back. It looked like Willis had got in again. Wilson had got in again. You see the rush from the backside, but Jermaine has the ability to get the ball on to Burley, and we talked about what an outstanding player Burley is. Frees up for his quarterback and gets it in the end zone. Well, now the extra point try by Anthony Brenner to be followed, no doubt, by an onside kick attempt. And that one is up and good. So the scoring drive, three plays, 45 yards. The touchdown pass, Jermaine to Burley for seven yards. It's a 14-point ball game. It was good. Zaya Burley on the receiving end of that Joe Germain touchdown pass, seven yards. So Georgia now has to make sure they cover the football. Arizona will try an onside kick, no doubt. No question about it. Georgia's expected to get everybody up. In fact, even Troy Bergeron, the deep receivers, moved all the way up to the 20-yard line for a ball that might spurt through. Anthony Brenner who's been around this league, played for the old Charlotte Rage. The Rattlers, then Colorado, then back with Arizona. And this is a, a technique that the kickers really work on. They spend a lot of time trying to perfect this onside kick. Time out, Georgia. So Georgia going to take a look a at exactly what Arizona looks like when they deployed from the huddle. Gives us a chance to check out the ADT defensive play of the game. And there have been a lot of good ones today, but that man, number 23, Willie Gary, has really established himself as the star defensively. No question about it. This was a big one. This is a big defensive stop. Here late in the football game, when it looked like Arizona was starting to kind of climb back into it a little bit, Gary comes up with a big defensive stop with the interception, and that allowed the force to continue to lead by 14. So Willie Gary, smiling. You know who else is smiling? 
The commissioner and Arthur Blank are smiling. Why? Because this is the largest crowd in the history of the Georgia Force. 13,297 have spun through the turnstiles. So they have a lot to tell you. Last week was a wonderful, you know, I'm a big man. Well, and you, and you talk about this being a family atmosphere. On that picture, Arthur, the, the redhead standing there with her back to you, that's Arthur's wife, and his son Josh was standing just in front, so Arthur has the entire family. There's, there's Josh right there. That's Stephanie Blank right there, so the, the whole family on hand. That's the commissioner. There's the big fella. I say, you know, he and I, I'm a big man, <laughs> not quite. I, I love having the commissioner on the air with us, one of the few guys who can stand next to me and make me look small. But uh, he is... He has an evangelical-like bent about this Arena Football League. Onside kick, covered up by Johnson. Chris Johnson covers it for Georgia at the 11 or 12-yard line. So Arizona did what they needed to do. It was a really good kick and good execution by the Georgia Force. You see Jermaine Smith picks off Gatewood right there who was trying to make the recovery. And then Johnson is going to get on the ball. 98 is Jermaine Smith. There's the block Outside, on Gatewood. 14 on the kick and kick. Ball goes to the six-yard line. First down, Georgia. So you hear Hunky Cooper was offside. The ball does not change hands. They don't redo anything. It's just now that Georgia moves even closer to the goal line. And you know full well when this one is done, Todd Shell will point to penalty yardage as a huge, huge story. 10 for a loss of nearly 70 yards now. He just can't afford to give that much away. Inside handoff again to Robert Thomas. He'll get a couple of yards on the play. Well, they talked about Georgia coming up with five stops. Part Arizona, of that is the penalty situation. Of the half. And now, of course, the Rattlers having to use their timeouts. Robert Thomas, 13 rushing touchdowns a year ago. You know, Arizona with 274 total yards tonight, which is better than what they normally average. But then you give 66 of those back. See Saya Burley, and then just off to the side of your screen right there, that is Gene Nudo, not looking on with a big smile, of course. The uh, general manager, operations president, does it all for the Arizona Rattlers, for the top executives in this league. Kubiak. Wide open, splits a trio of defenders. Touchdown again to Bergeron. He was so open that he actually had a chance to stick his hand in the air and then put it back down, and then finally Kubiak found him. He ran right through the seam. No one was there. No one picked him up. Fake a little reverse, nice little wrinkle there, but then Kubiak finds Bergeron, who's been a monster factor tonight. His eighth reception, and now that gives him, what, three touchdowns, yep. four touchdowns on the night, three touchdowns on the night. Yep. Eight catches, 116 yards, three one touchdowns as we hit the one-minute break. The one minute, the one minute, the the one minute warning. Remaining, Arizona two. The extra point, extra point. will be no attempted by Nelson Garner. West Fritz, the referee, explaining very clearly the clock stops here. They will not elapse any time off the clock. And after a break, we'll begin playing with the clock stopping on incompletions out of bounds plays and the like. Adding to the total. It's a 21 point ball game. Bergeron's contributed a lot. That was a two play six yard scoring drive for the force. He is big, he is physical, he's a veteran from San Diego State. He is Ricky Parker, our Iron Man of the game. And he makes a big time catch on a ball thrown behind him. That's his versatility. You see the versatility catching the ball behind. This guy's a, a defensive player by trade. Had oh. the big interception early yeah. in the game against Joe Germain for an early stop. Right, early in the second quarter. Ricky Parker doing it against his former teammates. Remember, he played the last five years with Arizona and followed Doug Plank 
here to Georgia. The Iron Man of the game. Hunky Cooper. Off the net. Into the hands of Burley. Loose. Parker is nearly there to cover it again. Who's got it? Arizona recovers. Hunky had trouble with it. Saya Burley covers the football, and Ricky Parker was trying to put the exclamation point on his night. If only he could have found it. A good kick by Garner because it came down out of the rafters, came straight down. I think Cooper thought it was going to catch the bottom of the net, hit that steel part. It did not, and it bounced over his head. Hunky has had an uncharacteristically difficult night at the net tonight. His first pain game back from injury, so it can be understandable a little bit. Gatewood pays the price at the 13. Kevin Gaines with the hit after the grab. And again, remember, in the final minute of play in each half, you're out of bounds. As that play was, the clock will stop. That was an 11-yard pickup by Gatewood. Wide open, Hunky Cooper. Hunky down on the 17-yard line. But again, flags came in from all corners. There'll be a clear-cut hold on Kelvin Ingram. That was definitely one infraction. Whether there were any others remains to be seen. <laughs> they might have given him a takedown also in Greco-Roman wrestling. 95 on the offense with a takedown. Half the distance remains. <laughs> <You called it. laughs> West Fred said with a takedown. I was just messing. And he's, you see great minds. You bet, yeah, you fed him the yeah. line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we laugh. Folks in the Valley of the Sun watching this are not pleased. Todd Shell is just spitting bullets across the way. Well, you don't make any excuses and Todd Shell won't, but certainly when you start talking about putting an all arena league football player like Cedric Bonner on the bench, and you take Bo Kelly out of the mix. That's yeah. going to affect your football game, a football team. I think Joe Germain certainly has an opportunity to be a, a good player in this league, but he's only played six games. Indeed so. Four games last year, filling in at times when Cedric Bonner was hurt. There is Reset Cedric the Bonner. Clock for 44 seconds, please. 44. Bonner been around for 12 years at a Cal State Northridge, all-time number one, winning as quarterback in this league. You see all he did in the first game of the season against Grand Rapids was throw six touchdowns and no interceptions. He's, so. Right. He's number three all-time in AFL touchdown passes, number two in passing yardage. You just can't lose a guy like that and not feel it. Flags again. Completion to Sia Burley. Looked like Kelvin Ingram once more. Guilty of a, another takedown. Yeah, Jermaine, Jermaine's giving him a, Jermaine Smith's giving him a tough time there. Good upfield rush from Jermaine Smith, and to protect his quarterback, Ingram again drags Smith to the ground. So another takedown. This will be the 12th penalty on Arizona. Holding 95, half the distance from the seven yard line. The man is out of bounds, the clock will start on the snap. So half the distance means it'll now be 12 penalties a loss of 77 yards. Well, Wendell Gaines is now back in the game at that at that spot. He'll be the tight end here on this play, but they had to take Ingram out of the game. Quick screen to Gatewood. He's to the 21-22 yard line, and the clock stops with 30 seconds to go. Ricky Parker. The tackle after the 18-yard game. Timeout, Arizona. Their second and a half. 30-second timeout. So, David, how about 30-second timeout? This ball game. I know you're somewhat new to watching Arena Football League action. Your thoughts about what you've seen today? Well, I'm really impressed with the ability of guys to play both sides of the football. Yeah. I think that's the first thing that jumps out at you. And then the speed of the game. It's so fast. It happens so quickly. 
from a defender standpoint, a receiver's on you so quickly. We've seen great plays on both sides of the ball, both defenders and off offensive players making plays. It, fun game to watch. You're, it's an intimate relationship with the fan, too, because you're right on top of the field. Uh, you, if, you do, if you've never seen one, you need to go see arena football. This is a, a heck of a theater. When this game is over, when every game is over, all of these players go on the field with the fans. They must. It's not do you want to. By contract, these players must stay out there and sign autographs for the fans. It's quite a party on the field when the game is done. The screen to Hunky Cooper, the league's number one all-time, all-purpose yardage man. 12 yards more in his ongoing totals. Well, it's very personable, too. You talked about they have to come out, and, and it's part of their contract. You watch these guys. A smile on their face. They're on the field. And, and, yes, it's part of the deal, but it's something they enjoy doing. They enjoy being a part of the fans and what the fans bring. To, and the same thing happens in Arizona. Jerry Colangelo has a, sure. a great operation in Arizona, and the, and, the, and the guys do the same thing there. Jermaine pumps, hit, no one home, and there are flags on the play. Flag back at the line of scrimmage. Jermaine Smith that time leaving a calling card on Joe Jermaine. But I believe before he even got there, he was being held. So I believe the first penalty will be on Arizona for a hold. Let's listen. Holding 89 on the offense with a takedown. 10 yard penalty <laughs> remains first out. Wendell Gaines. Well, a very difficult proposition now for the Arizona front three to block is because, you know, Georgia is just completely disregarding screen and or run. They're just coming off, teeing off, trying to get after Joe Germain. So tough, tough matchup for him right now. For those of you who might have left your abacus in another room, that's 13 penalties for a loss of 87 yards now. No one expects a handoff to Antoine Scott, but Georgia's defense not fooled. They stayed home, and it's a one-yard pickup with just 15 seconds to go. Timeout, Arizona. That's our last time out of the half. That's a 30 second time out. You know, I don't want to belabor the points about uh, penalties, but I don't care if you're playing here, if you're outside on Peachtree Street, or if you're playing on Camelback in Arizona. You get 87 yards in penalties or something that's going gonna, gonna to cost you. So yeah, how does things look tonight now? The Southern Division is going to be uh, looking after the game a little bit differently. And we talked about Orlando and Tampa played last night. Orlando wins that football game, so they are sitting on top. But what George has done, is they've kept pace. They're just one game back. All right, Georgia will go to two and one with the win here tonight. Jermaine Burley was in double coverage and could not grab a hold of it. Conversely, things are not going to be nearly as rosy as there are flags on the play. Things won't be nearly as rosy out west. Arizona will drop to one and two with the loss in the very tough AFL Western Division with LA and Las Vegas. 55 on the offense, decline. Second down. Jerry Sharp hit with a uh, hold there. And we talked, and there it is. There's the Western Division. Los Angeles and Vegas at the top. Of course, San Jose, the defending champion. You know they're going to make a push at some point. Very tough division Arizona playing in. And they're going to get some of those teams in their own building and have to defend their own backyard here in a couple of weeks. Jermaine with pressure, and there's a souvenir. Hunky Cooper, you see, even at this stage of the game, giving it his all as he jumps up to try and make the grab. Gillis Wilson and Jermaine Smith just teeing off on Joe Jermaine. They're using old Joe now like a like a cheap pinata. Well, I thought that they did a good, they answered the call. Doug Flank wanted a more physical effort from his defense, and I thought he got that tonight. I think some of the penalties are evident of the effort that was put forth by the defensive front to get after the passer. Incurring the holding penalties and such, I think that was part of the physical nature they wanted to bring to the park, and they got it done tonight. You see a fourth and 19, five seconds to go in this one. Motion on the right side of the defensive front. Free play, it's live off the net, remember. It is off the hands of Parker, incomplete. But as the clock hits zeros, the penalty on Georgia will give Arizona 
a free play like in any game of football you don't normally end on a defensive penalty offside 98 on defense five yard penalty it remains fourth down we have an untimed down of course the uh, situation is moot you can't pick up 21 points on one play but just to keep things on the up and up they will finish the game and Chris Johnson showing a few uh, moves on the bench Todd shell pacing in front didn't like what he saw here tonight Hunky Cooper in motion flags on the play Jermaine again can be played off the net it is off Burley's hands out of bounds but I think again Georgia may have jumped so we will have yet another untimed down West Fritz says enough with the penalties already it's been that kind of a night folks the game got out of hand a 21 point spread in this league is virtually unheard of offside 92 on defense we have another on time down. We must go till there's no penalty on the defense. <laughs> so he, says, he says with a bit of disdain in his voice. So let's see. Arizona, 13 penalties for 87 that were accepted. Georgia, 9 for 59. 22 penalties for 146 yards here this evening. The penalty report will read like the Dead Sea Scrolls before this one is done. Does it get caught? Yes, for a touchdown, Randy Gatewood. Randy Gatewood with a catch, and now we'll have to have another untimed play, the extra point. Boy, that might have been Joe Germain's best throw we in the game. We still have an extra point. <laughs> Joe Germain does a great job of avoiding pressure, slips the outside, and this is a frozen rope he throws right in the corner of the end zone to Gatewood. Great good play by Gate, too. Yeah, great avoid, and then the real good catch by Gatewood with a super throw. Gatewood, 11 catches, 141 yards and a touchdown. Doug Plank didn't want to give up those points. Extra point, Anthony Brenner, kick is up. It is good, game is over. 61 to 47 is going to be the final number the georgia force going to two up and one down the arizona rattlers drop to one and two we're back to atlanta after this back with you in atlanta where the georgia force defeat the arizona rattlers 61 47 downstairs bo estes is caught up with the winning head coach bo all right, Coach, congratulations. I know this is a game you wanted, and you wanted to finish it off. You had a halftime lead. Tell me about your team's performance in the second half finishing this game. Well, you know, we gave up a touchdown there at the very end, but I have to give that a lot of credit to Joe Germain. I did a heck of a job as far as getting that football in there, but I'm proud of our team because they never finished. I mean, they never quit. Uh, we, we had a lead last week, and we gave it up. But that didn't happen this week. So we just got to use this game as a springboard for the rest of the season. I know you mentioned earlier that this game against Arizona didn't hold much special significance, but how nice is it getting a win against your old team? No, I, I can't lie. I mean, this really was a special experience for me, and uh, it meant a lot watching our players here with the Georgia Force step up and really play hard. Tell me, what, if you could, Rick, uh, Ricky Parker was our Iron Man of the game. Tell me about his performance. No, Ricky, I could tell all week long, Ricky was getting ready to play against his former team, and uh, that's a big reason why I had Ricky on this team, you know, and, and recruit him from Arizona because he's a play, he's a playmaker. He makes big plays when you need it in cr crucial times of the game. Uh, record attendance here tonight. How much did that, the fans help you out here? I have to tell you, you know, the, the ninth man here was tremendous. I mean, it made a big difference. Motivation of our team, we never had a letdown. And I think a big part of it was the fans. Coach, congratulations on the big win. Let's send it back up to Eli. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Some of the numbers, Joe Germain, 25 of 37, 311 yards. His numbers actually far better than those of Kubiak, though Kubiak gets the win. Well, and he turned the football over a couple times, and they were unable to move the ball with the penalties creeping in. Kubiak was outstanding, as was Troy Bergeron. I thought the physical play of the Georgia force defensively was a factor in this football game. But ultimately, defend your home port, defend your backyard, and try to steal some on the road. Bergeron, eight catches, 116. 
Gatewood, 11 catches for 141. Hope you enjoyed our coverage of Atlanta. Don't forget the force head to Las Vegas next week. The Rattlers are home at America West against the Colorado Crush. For our crew here in Atlanta, for Dave Archer, for Bo Estes, and all the gentlemen and ladies downstairs, I'm Eli Gold. Hope you've enjoyed the AFL on FSN. This has been a presentation of the Arena Football League. Hey, night people. The Yates Midnight Save. This telecast is copyrighted by the Arena Football League for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the AFL's consent is strictly prohibited. Welcome back to the Phillips Arena halftime. Just about done. There are the numbers. I'm Eli Gold with Dave Archer, Bo Estes, and the coach of the Georgia Force, Doug Plank. All right, Coach, obviously you said in the pregame you wanted to get off to a quick start. What were your impressions of the first half of your team? Well, really, our team played very well except for the last minute of the football game, or last minute of the half, and it's my responsibility now to make sure these guys are focused so we finish strong in the second half. Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks so much. And that was a deal last week we just said. They had a 20-3 lead on the road at Staples Center against L.A., let it get away, and eventually they lost the ball game 46-41. you got to maintain that edge. Yeah, really, they, they got up to the great start, as you talked about. And conversely, Arizona fell behind 20-7 in their game, stormed backward, but fell short. So certainly not what Todd Schell and his staff wanted to fall behind here on the road. And in return yardage, that man, Bergeron, and his teammates with 106 return yards, Arizona just 64. That is a, okay. another storyline, setting things up a pretty good field position off the kick. Bergeron, from four yards deep, they'll go to work at the 10-yard line. Anthony Hutch on the stop, and a 16-yard run back. There's Big Hutch. 44 sacks when he played at Murray State collegiately. That is still, to this day, a record for the Racers. Well, Hutch is one of those players that came over from New York, very familiar with what Todd Shell likes to do defensively. He's already made a big impact tonight with the sack. He was even the lineman of the year when he played for the Chicago Rush back in 2001. Lee and Doxson are the wide receivers. Bergeron, the motion man. Kubiak to the 15-yard line, a five-yard pickup to Todd Doxson. You know, we touched on the fact that Kubiak was an outstanding quarterback when he played for Buffalo's Destroyers and the Dallas Desperados. But I'll tell you something, missing a whole year like he did last year with that herniated disc in his neck shook off the rust in his back. Yeah, there's some questions from a quarterback. If you, you come back and have to take a year off, he stepped in and like he hasn't missed a beat. Played a couple of years in NFL Europe, one with Amsterdam, one with Barcelona. Out of the U.S. Naval Academy, he's a good one. Bergeron in front of Gatewood out to midfield, the 25-yard line. It'll be a 10-yard pickup on that play. Hunky Cooper finally trips him up after he got around Gatewood. A nice little switch up this time. Bergeron's in motion, and normally he's running down through the middle of the field. He runs down now at about eight yards and stops. And Kubiak's quick to get the ball on him to let his rookie wide receiver turn and run with the football. He's so quick. Watch him make Gatewood miss. Troy Bergeron, the rookie at 6'2", 180 pounds. Todd Doxson in motion. The out route. Flags are down. Derek Lee with a completion to the 14-yard line, but Kubiak got drilled after the play. It'll be an 11-yard pickup. There was holding in the process as well. A guy coming in on Kubiak got held. Watch it here. Boy, did Hunky ever lower the boom, huh? Big lick on Derek Lee at the end of that play. Lee, big physical, six foot five, 215-pound wide receiver, was able to shrug off the tackle and pick up the first down. But the whistle on Arizona with the penalty marking it off down to a first and goal from the seven yard line. Really haven't let mentioned Lee's name much. He came into the came into the game leading the Georgia Force in receptions. At 16 catches for 182 yards coming in. Robert Thomas was is the fullback. He has two touchdowns tonight. 
Pressure. And Kubiak unloads it with a love punch from Anthony Hutch. And I, Hutch says, I love to do this. <laughs> Well, it looks like Hutch has turned up his game a little bit. He realizes it's a physical football game, and he is he's turned it up. We saw the sack right before the end of the half. Hutch is going to come off the right side of your screen and see. That's just the bull rush. He just wins physically up front and then gets in Kubiak's face and disrupts, disrupts the throw. That's a real effort play from Hutch. Even collegiately, he was good. Twice he was an all OVC performer, the Ohio Valley Conference at Murray State. Again the outside rush. Underneath they go with the center screen, and Robert Thomas makes it to the one. Force fan said he got in. Great blocking in front of him by Derry Myricks and Adam Metz. Well, good patience too by Thomas. It's a screen. They let the rush come through, a quick rush. And they dump it off to Thomas. Watch the patience. Let him set up the Mets block. And that gets him down to the goal line. And Mets converted the 7-10 split on that one. <laughs> he had bodies hurtling in every direction. Inches away. If they give it to Thomas, he'll go for his third touchdown. Great block at six. Kubiak says, I'll keep it. It didn't look pretty, but the points on the board will look just fine for Georgia. Was that a busted play or did it look ugly? No, it certainly looked like a broken play. Kubiak didn't get around to make the handoff. I think he was expecting Thomas to come to the left side. He expected Thomas to hit that play on the left side when the when the when the back was not there. You're taught as a quarterback. You hit the hole. The hole was there. He scores the touchdown. Six plays, 39 yards in four minutes. The extra point try by Nelson Garner. Georgia's lead is now 18, but there's tons of football yet to go. 10-29 remaining in the third. Kubiak, they don't give you style points in this league. They give you scoreboard points, and that's six more. Jim Kubiak, a much-deserved breather, up by 18 on the Georgia Force. Hey, folks, tomorrow, why not get caught in the action as the world's greatest bass fishermen compete with over $7 million in prizes on the line? FLW Outdoors, Sunday at 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, right here on FSN. Our own version of Gadabout Gaddis sitting to my right, Dave Archer. Remember old Gadabout Gaddis? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, how old does that make you and oh, I? Yeah, we just dated ourselves big time. Right? Yeah. Glad you folks are with us. The AFL on FSN. We've got lots of football coming your way all season long. Plus, of course, Sunday afternoon coverage of the AFL on NBC. Better than 100 games will be coming your way throughout the course of the year. That is a football kicked off the scoreboard, and the play is dead. By rule, the football will come to the 20. 20 yard line, first down, Arizona. Anytime the ball hits any obstruction, a scoreboard, a speaker, a jersey of a retired player, anything, ball comes out to the 20. Doink. Now think how big a penalty, though, on a 50-yard field, they put the ball at the 20. That's exactly right. Kicker's got to avoid that part of it. Avoid the scoreboard on your kickoff. Burley, Cooper, and Gatewood are the Arizona receivers. Jermaine with time, and the flags down, throws high to Hunky, who makes a great catch at the 19-yard line. A 12-yard pickup, but again, there are flags. Anthony Hutch is walking around as though, uh-oh, they might have caught me holding. We'll have to wait and see what the officials say. But he and Derry Myricks were tangling. Foul on the play. Illegal defense, twist. 56 on the defense. Holding, 82 on the offset, yep. offense. They offset, repeats it down. So Hutch was holding. A twist is something you see in the stadium played game all the time. You can't do it in this league. That's exactly right. Where one, one, either a lineman or a linebacker goes one way and the other defender comes off his rear end going the other way. It's got to be a straight up rush. 
if you blitz a linebacker, he's a, he's allowed to go through one of the A gaps, which is the, the center tight end gap, or the offensive line gap with the center, and then the other side as well. So Anthony Hutch said, all right, you're going to twist, I'm going to hold. And never the twain shall meet. Jermaine. Yeah! Into the middle, and that time, Gatewood got hit well before the ball got there. Kevin Gaines was the first guy to put the hit on old Gate. And the flags. Well, it's an easy call. Gaines was definitely there before the ball arrived. Hey, those crossing routes to Gatewood tonight have been very effective for the Rattlers, haven't they? They're letting Burley clear through and then bringing Gatewood underneath. It's been effective. Fast hit appearance, 21 on the defense. 10 yards, automatic first down. You're going to see Gaines get there early. The ball right coming right at you. There you see 21 Gaines over the top. This is Gatewood. Burley clears to the inside. Gatewood comes right inside. Bang. And there's the early contact. So good call. Good job by the official. Gatewood has six catches for 82 yards as Kevin Gaines, who has always been aggressive in this league with good size, good strength, gets hit with the flag. Mid-stages, third quarter. Setting up the screen. Kerry Taylor down to the 15-yard line. He'll pick up five on the play. Derek Lee and Robert Thomas combining on the stop of Kerry Taylor. Nice little change up, get the ball to the back out in the flat, letting go one on one with Derek Lee, the 6'5, 250 pound linebacker. And a nice pickup, got five yards on the play. A name we haven't mentioned much. Yeah. Early in the game, Burley gets the touchdown, but he's not been a factor. I think George has done a decent job of taking him away. You got to expect Jermaine to find Burley down here close. Burley, grand total of a, of a couple of catches, seven yards, Randy Gatewood to the 12 yard line. Picks up a couple on the play. Jermaine Younger making the tackle and there's Anthony Hutch again. Always playing himself a very active ball game tonight. He Hutch got a block. big lick. Number, yeah. number 82, Hutch is gonna get the block. Boom. Ooh. My goodness. <laughs> said hello to Mr. Gaines. I don't care if it is your building. This is my neighborhood, he says. <laughs> Third down play now. Burley in motion with Gatewood. They cross. Burley, you called it. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. We just said not talk much about Burley, and he's been the featured guy for Arizona all season long, and you, you had to expect that he would step up and make a play for his quarterback. This is the ball really a little underthrown. Watch Burley come back and get it. Does a good job of hanging on. Burley runs the corner route, and the ball's going to be a little underthrown. He comes back and makes the play for his quarterback. A native of Mesa, Arizona, capping off that three-play, 30-yard scoring drive in three minutes and 25 seconds. Extra point is no good. Anthony Brenner missing wide left on the extra point. Will that be a factor as we continue through this ball game? 38-26, there's Saya Burley. Right into your living room with another AFL touchdown. All right, thank, uh, welcome back to Phillips Arena. And Georgia Force up by 12 here, and the man instrumental in this whole process right here with us, Arthur Blanken. It doesn't take long when I get to know you to know that you're a passionate fan about this team. You're not just an owner here. No, no, that, that's absolutely true. It's the same. Same commitment we had to the Falcons. We're going to give to the Georgia Force Arena football. We're excited about our ownership. Promise the fans a competitive team. Promise the fans a great game day experience. We promise the fans the team they're proud of in the community as well. And we're going to deliver on all three of those fronts. And we're starting we're starting out this league second second home game. We're up right now. Hopefully, we bring home a winner tonight. All right, more with Arthur Blanket. Just a minute. Let's send it back up to Eli. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Of course, a third-year owner of the Atlanta Falcons who is already, uh, as you see, week in and week out, Dave, covering the Falcons on the broadcast side with our partner, West Durham. You've seen that franchise turn around into a solid uh, performing ball club. He's a community guy. Bergeron off the net. They'll start at the nine-yard line as we go back downstairs to Bo and Arthur Blank. Gentlemen. 
All right, this is like one thing that is uh, rather unique for your team is that you guys share a practice facility with your other team, the Atlanta Falcons. Tell me about the relationship between the players and the coaches. How much do they interact? Well, it's, it's wonderful. You know, it's interesting. Before I bought the force, I asked our general manager and staff, I said, you know, I, we don't have to do this. But they, they're as excited about it as I am. In fact, Jim Moore was the first guy that signed, our head coach of the Falcons signed up for tickets. Jim McKay signed up for tickets. Rich McKay signed up for tickets. I mean, every, everybody is working together in a collaborative partnership. And we have players here tonight. I mean, they don't have time. Mean, they want to be here. So Georgia, it's a great relationship. The force players really appreciate working in an NFL facility. There's e everything there is available to them, and it makes a difference in terms of, of the way they feel about themselves. So, we're, you know, for us, it's a great experience, and we love having them up there. Mr. Blank, congratulations, and thanks so much for all you do. Eli, back well, up to you. And we saw T.J. Duckett and Justin Griffith and Brian Finneran in the crowd. They're here supporting the force. Don't miss it. Georgia quarterback Jim Kubiak, offensive coordinator Steve Tun, and the Force fans on hand enjoying a night here in Atlanta. Hey, don't forget, folks, coming in on uh, AFL on NBC tomorrow, regional coverage from Dallas, from Philadelphia, from Colorado, and from the home of the voodoo. Just check your local listings for the game and time in your area. The AFL on NBC coming up tomorrow. Eli Gold, Dave Archer, Bo Estes. Glad you're joining us here at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. <laughs> Off the hands of Lee, incomplete. Kaplan thought he had a play on the football, couldn't quite make it. You know, we saw Arthur Blank there, the owner of the Falcons, who also owns the force, that is not unique in the world of the Arena Football League. Bud Adams, who owns the Titans, now owning the revitalized Nashville Cats, the Jones family in Dallas. Tom Benson owns both the Voodoo and the Saints. Of course, Pat Bolin and John Elway, owners in Colorado. There are other such teams, as you see Mr. Blank again from his front row seat. Kubiak, Bergeron, first down to the 20 yard line. You see the uh confidence growing with this rookie wide receiver with every play that the ball is thrown in his direction. This is the ball thrown behind him. Bergeron's going to come from the right side of your screen. He's going to square it off across the middle. Kubiak's going to throw the ball behind him. Watch the receiver. Good receiver skills to gear down just a little bit, make the catch, secure the football, get the first down for Doug Plank and his team. Troy Bergeron is number six in the league in receiving yards. Entering action tonight. And he's not hurt his efforts any. Flags. It's like flag day. Everybody who had one threw it when Kelvin Ingram jumped. It's tough when you're 6'4", 319. You just can't hide. <laughs> you just no, can't hide. Especially in a, in a field this small where you, you, you're a big guy like that, you're going to stand out. Kelvin Ingram is pointing across the line, says, uh, -uh I was drawn off. Encroachment by contact, 95 defense, five-yard penalty remains, first out. Sorry, Kelvin. Now you talk about what incredible athletes these guys are, the big mm -hmm. guys. They play both ways, offense and defense. And, you know, this is such a fast football game. you got to be a tremendous athlete to play sure. in the Arena Football League because of the, you know, the, the Iron Man concept of playing both directions. What I like about Kelvin, he's a guy who knows how to play. He gives it his all every play. Won a championship with the Orlando Predators, won the Arena Bowl in 98. Brings that good element of leadership to the Rattlers. Nothing for Kubiak, but look at the time. And he just says, here, have a souvenir up in the section 211. Row J, seat 17. Well, once again, two things happen there. Tremendous coverage down the field by the Arizona Rattlers, and then real good protection up front by the Georgia Force. You see the four men, there it is, a nice little pocket. But as things begin to break down in the up front, it's time to get rid of the football, credit the quarterback throwing the ball away, but give the Arizona Rattlers credit, great coverage down the field. They really did, and Shane Grice, Juan Porter, Gillis Wilson, they were giving Kubiak as much protection as they could. Again, the floating fade route, 
Bergeron, touchdown, he beats Terrence Joseph. Wow. That play, as I've said time and again, talking to Doug Plank, it burned him a bit last week. Kubiak had a couple of picks. Not tonight. No, and it's a play where Arizona is, a, is an aggressive, challenging football team. They come with the blitz, the linebacker comes, the, the defense, he backs her up in tight coverage on the line of scrimmage, and Bergeron just wins early, and a good soft throw from Kubiak. 25 yards on that scoring drive. Four plays, 41 yards total for the drive. That last play was a 25-yarder in just three minutes and 25 seconds. So every time the Rattlers try to draw close, Kubiak says, time to find Bergeron. That's been a deadly combination for the force tonight. <laughs> Troy Bergeron taking a seat on the bench there. What a night, six catches, 102 yards. He's grabbed 102 of the 203 throwing yards by Kubiak. There you see the upcoming schedule. We told you earlier, the Rattlers back home against the Crush at America West next week. Then to New York. Then Los Angeles comes in. Then it's back to Florida. Lots of travel. Two long more Las trips. Vegas is in, yeah. yeah. Two real long trips, New York, and then go home for one, and then back to Tampa. So. Tough travel uh, for uh, Arizona, but they'll have to defend their home field. A couple of their interdivision rivals come in early in the season into their own building. I was talking earlier this evening with Hunky Cooper, He's been a friend for many years. I said, how big is it for you to try and break George LaFrance's record? He said, it's big, but he, I, I want to win. He said, I've seen some of these slow starts over the years because I don't want one of those three and five uh, ranting and raging approaches from the coaches. And I don't need that. He's played at a very high level for a long time. 93 yes. MVP of the league. Back-to-back -back years, the Iron Man of the year. Heck of a career. 13 years in this league, but they need some points here tonight. Georgia up 45-26. Saya Burley is the return man. And down he goes at the one. Chris Johnson was there to make the tackle. So Saya Burley down at the one, 49 yards to go for Arizona's offense. Well, the two guys that we thought we'd have to feature tonight, Saya Burley for Arizona, Troy Bergeron for the Georgia Force. Bergeron has had a couple big kickoff returns. He has the, the touchdown catches. He's been a bit of a bigger factor so far, although Burley has two touchdown grabs tonight. As far as one of the other stories, the injuries to Arizona. You can't overlook that. Though Jermaine has played well more often than not, that time he misconnects with Justin Taplin. Again, if you're just joining us, arguably the best rusher in this league, one of only four guys to ever top 1,000 yards, was Bo Kelly. Bo is already banged up and out. Frank Trentadu was going to back him up and pull back. He breaks his toe last night in a rather bizarre accident in his hotel room, stubbed his toe and it breaks. So now you've got to go with Kerry Taylor and Antoine Scott. And that's just not Bo Kelly or Frank Trent to do, as Kaplan makes the grab for seven yards. Well, and you make a good point, Eli. What you're talking about there is not only do you lose the rushing that a Bo Kelly, and he over the career leader in rushing over 1,000 yards, 60 touchdowns, but you also lose the pass protection part of things yeah. and how to protect for your quarterback when you have young guys that haven't played that position much. Now, Kerry Taylor's done fine. Four carries, 18 yards and a touchdown. Antoine Scott has not been a man to run the ball, though he is in there now. But in the past, when Bo Kelly was not there, Danny White used to end up having to throw when otherwise Bo would have run the ball. Here's Tom Pace. Tom Pace gets free. Tom Pace is going to go. Touchdown, Arizona. Todd Doxson and Chris Johnson had him as though he were the meat in the sandwich, and somehow Tom Pace slithered through. Well, Pace makes an outstanding individual play, but again, we have to go back to protection. We just got through talking about the two young guys playing fullback, 
Antoine Scott does a great job on Davari right there as he circles him around. Watch Pace make Doxon miss. Wow. Duck the head. As soon as you put the head down, you're not seeing the def not seeing your, your guy you're going to hit. And uh, Pace slips by and goes for the big play. Three plays, 49 yards in a minute 46. A 42-yarder by Tom Pace. And the extra point is up and good. The Rattlers really needed that. And Tom Pace just, I mean, it's a remarkable move to get free. Real good job of Pace splitting the defenders. Most defenders don't want to hit each other. Watch Doxon duck the head. As soon as he put the head down, Pace made the nice move and, and danced to the inside. Big time play by Tom Pace right there. You know what I like about Tom Pace right there, number 23, his background. He was a swimming pool cleaner in Tempe, Arizona, before walking on at Arizona State University, becomes a fine ball player there, and then in this league, Pace has rushed for touchdowns. He's caught a touchdown pass. He's thrown for a touchdown. He had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. He's run an interception back for a touchdown. I mean, he has scored over the years in every conceivable way. I like those kind of utility guys. Definitely, and when you make plays like that, Eli, when your team's down and you need it, you're gonna see Pace get the football a little more. From a quarterback's perspective, if I kick the ball out to somebody, throw it out there, and a guy makes a play like that, in a tendency from a quarterback perspective, you're gonna see the ball a little bit more from me. I'm gonna get the ball out to you and let you make some plays. See the final 26 seconds of the third quarter on the board as we head towards the end of period three. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. This one is far from over here at the Phillips Arena. Onside kick. It is covered up, then comes loose again, but is covered up by Todd Doxson. He had it, lost it, and got it back. The unpredictability of the Arena Football League. And this re recovery uh, by Doxson, although the ball got loose and Damari, he and Damari were able to cover it, is created by Jermaine Younger. Jermaine Younger runs in and knocks down the Arizona player. Jermaine Younger, 42 right in the middle of the screen. Watch Jermaine Younger. He didn't go for the ball. He knocks off the two Arizona players so his guys can get the football. Great effort by Jermaine Younger. Won't won't show up in a stat book, won't show up anywhere, but on the film, his teammates will see that. That's a big-time play by Jermaine Younger. And on that play, the quarter will end. We have 15 minutes of football the remaining. The Force with a 12-point lead on the Rattlers, but this one is far from done. Stick around. We're back to the heart of the New South right after this. But for now, sit back and enjoy. Don't miss it. Halftime at the Phillips Arena on the Aaron's Halftime Report. Welcome back, everybody. It is a 31-20 Georgia lead. We told you Georgia got points on all of their possessions. Arizona's five first-half possessions, two touchdowns, two field goals, and one interception. You know, owners from the National Football League world are continuing to buy into the Arena Football League. And that now includes another NFL personality who's part owner in Chicago, Mike Ditka. Take a look. It's just exciting football. I, I mean, I love to watch it, and I'm not saying that because I'm part of it. Now, I've watched it when I wasn't part of it, and I found it very, very exciting. And uh, I think you got some good organizations. It's, uh, you know, the goal of every team is to make the Arena Bowl, win the Arena Bowl championship. You gotta love the sport, gang. You gotta see where they, they dress in their locker rooms are not what you call top grade or, or high quality. But you know, they make the best of it. You know, they're not guys that go around complaining and griping that this could be better or that could be better. It is what it is, you know, and that's not bad. They don't play quite like my 85 Bears defense, but uh, you know, the other day it was 66-65. I mean, it looked like a track meet out there. But these guys are good, and it's hard to stop them if you understand the rules. I mean, these guys are very talented. They're throwing the ball, running the routes. I mean, if you talk about athletically, they're, they're not much different from the NFL, believe me. I mean, the NFL players playing on that type of a field, that small of a field, probably wouldn't look much different. I'm not a big celebration guy, but when you see the backflips and everything else, 
it's pretty darn interesting. But I think, you know, that you, you score a touchdown, you know, what's the matter with handing the ball to the official? I mean, that's classy. I've watched great, great running backs like Walter Payton and, and uh, Barry Sanders and Dale Sayers and Jim Brown, and I could go on and on and on, and Marcus Allen, and handed the ball to the official. No, no gyration. Tony Dorsett. I mean, a lot of guys, good receivers, Jerry Wright, hand the ball to the official. Treat the game with dignity. Treat the game with respect. I don't know if I'd like to get whacked into those boards. I mean, uh, I saw a couple shots the other day that were probably as hard as hit as I'd seen in a long, long time. And here's the thing about it. They, they allow that to happen in the arena football league. The NFL, they would have they fined somebody, and they probably would have suspended somebody. So, But this is football. These kids go out there, and they lay it on the line. They play as hard as they can. They don't make a lot of money, but they, but they love the game, and they play for the love of the game more than anything else. Well, no lack of opinion from that man right there. There's one of those hits she was talking about. Anthony Hutch putting the kibosh on Jim Kubiak. We're at halftime in Atlanta. Welcome back, everybody. The Aaron's halftime report continues from Atlanta, Georgia. A beautiful night outside the Phillips Arena. Olympic Centennial Park. They are the numbers, Georgia, 31 to 20. I know so many of you are part of the Arena Football League, U.S. Army Fantasy Football League. Why don't we take a look at some of the surprises as to who is one of the biggest names in the fantasy world. How about Michael Bishop of the Grand Rapids Rampage doing the unthinkable? He rushed for 100 yards the other day. Atu Molden of the Chicago Rush. Cedric Bonner, he's still a big number, though he's injured. And Sia Burley, a valuable asset if you're playing the Fantasy Football League. We're back with highlights next. Welcome back. The Aaron's Halftime Report continues from downtown Atlanta, Phillips Arena, as we welcome you indoors a 31-20 Georgia force lead over the Arizona Rattlers. In this league, Dave, you basically have to score every time you've got the ball. That's what Georgia's done. Arizona, they've been stopped a couple of times. Yeah, Georgia's come up with three stops. They forced two field goals and got the interception. And really, like you said, that's really what it's been all about. And it's been about the physical play of Georgia. I think physical has been what Georgia's played with. Arizona has not. And that was something Doug Plank stressed to you and I earlier in the week in the aftermath of basically blowing a 20 to 3 lead in Los Angeles last week. He said, we've got to play a more physical brand of football. Well, and Arizona wanted to come up and challenge the wide receivers of this Georgia Force football team, but they failed to be able to stop. And it's been Troy Bergeron more than that. But for Arizona, you've seen Saya Burley on the receiving end of Joe Germain's touchdown passes. Handoffs inside, which has been a storyline. Anthony Hutch with a big sack. They have kept some pressure on. Meanwhile, for Georgia, they too have run the football in. Robert Thomas getting the job done twice, as a matter of fact. And however you do it, that's part of the deal here. But when you run the football, Eli, as you know, that means you're coming off the ball and playing physical. And part of that transfers to the defensive side. They've been able to get after Joe, Joe Germain. And again, you see the possessions were even. But only two TDs for Arizona, four for Georgia, and the total yardage can't be much closer than that. So we are at halftime here at the Phillips Arena, closing in on the second half kick, just three minutes away. This AFL on FSN telecast is brought to you by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader, by Health Sound the official health care provider of the Arena Football League. And by Aaron's. Do the math and you'll choose Aaron's for dream products at dream prices. Welcome back to the Phillips Arena here in Atlanta. Tied at 7 as we begin the second quarter. Hey folks, tomorrow get caught in the action as the world's greatest bass fishermen compete with over $7 million in prizes on the line. FLW Outdoors, that's tomorrow, or excuse me, Sunday, that is tomorrow, at 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, right here on FSN. Robert Thomas, the fullback, gets the handoff, pulls over bodies on the eighth play of the drive for the touchdown. 
Robert Thomas, who played with the Cowboys from 1998 to 02, gives away a souvenir in the process and has his second touchdown of the night. Well, Jermaine Smith gets the cutoff block to the inside, and you see Thomas just follows 98 Smith into the end zone. So good surge to the tight end, Jermaine Smith. It'll be an eight-play drive, 48 yards in five minutes and 12 seconds. The extra point by Nelson Garner just does get in out of the hold of Jim Kubiak, and it is now Georgia on top by a score of 14 to 7. You know, we've been talking so much about Hunky Cooper going for that all-time all-purpose yardage record here tonight. You know what his real name is? Not Hunky. Bo, what's his real name? Well, you're talking about a guy, Hunky Cooper, that we're going to be discussing a lot tonight, and Hunky's real name is Hernandez. How did he get that name, you ask? Well, his father was in the service. While in a foxhole, he and a guy named Hernandez decided that if either of them died, the other would name, they would name their son after the other guy. Hernandez lost his life. Hunky Cooper is Hernandez. Eli, I think that's what you call him. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I always see. I saw him before the ball game. He and I sat down. I said, so, Hernandez, how you doing? And uh, we have a nice little uh, chuckle about that. But there he is, Hunky Cooper. You know, he was within moments, literally, folks, of retiring. There was a press conference call just before this season began at the America West Arena where the Rattlers play. Everybody expected Hunky was going to retire. He had just driven to home in Las Vegas, talked with his wife and family. When he got back to the arena, saw all the media waiting, he said, I just couldn't do it. He said, he, and you as a former athlete, Dave, you know to it, walk, it's tough to pull that trigger. Hard to walk away, especially when you're still playing at a pretty high level, which he is. Zaya Burley, the deep man for the Rattlers. Burley lands on the play, and that spin move. He ends up getting some guys caught with blocks in the back. A 17-yard run back by Burley. You know, when Saya played collegiately as a wide receiver, there, number five on your screen, he was the favorite target of a guy by the name of Dante Culpepper when they were together at UCF, Central Florida. Not a bad player. Holding, 25 on the kicking team. Half the distance. It'll be first down, Arizona at that point. Terrence Joseph getting caught with his hold there. Yeah, that was a pretty potent combination at UCF, uh, Culpepper to Burley. Sure was. And Sia Burley, is, it's not close. He is the favorite target for Jermaine and Cedric Bonner when he's on the field. Gatewood, Burley, split wide. That's Burley in motion. Jermaine looks, Gatewood breaks off his route to help his quarterback, and he's nearing midfield, and he gets across the 25-yard line. A 20-yard pickup, and that's where a veteran like Gatewood says, my quarterback's in trouble. He broke off his route to help out. You said it. Jermaine Smith gets a good inside push. Jermaine uses his feet and steps away from the rush. And like you talked about, Gatewood comes back to help his quarterback, and then a nice run after the catch. Real good job by the veteran wide receiver, Gatewood. Gets taken down by Wendell Gaines, his own teammate. When you get hit by a guy 6'5", 300, you're tackled. <laughs> Jermaine, with time, this is Sia Burley on the out route. So it'll go incomplete. Willie Gary, number 23 in blue, the former Kentucky Wildcat, there on the coverage. And you got to credit some of the pressure Jermaine Smith gets in the, in the face of Joe Germain. Got some Germains on the field, yeah. don't we? You got Jermaine Younger, Jermaine Smith, Joe Ger It's all Germain in this thing. <laughs> it really is. Well, Joe's off to the kind of start they'd hope. They, other than the interception throw, he's been solid. Jermaine won a Super Bowl ring with the St. Louis Rams, you might remember, in 98. Throws like that to Gatewood, picking up a first down inside the 10 to the 7. He spun around Ricky Parker, who makes the tackle. 17-yard pickup on the play. Well, what's impressive about Joe Germain is he's standing in there. There's some pressure coming. Georgia Force is getting some heat on him, but he's standing in there waiting. He waited for Gatewood coming from the backside here with people in his face. Makes a good throw. If you follow college football, you might well know and remember Joe Germain, number three all-time quarterback in the history of Ohio State University. I mean, the guy can play. Out route off Gatewood, who figures he was tackled before the ball got there, but there's no whistle. Gatewood thought Kevin Gaines 
had hit him before the ball got there. It looked like there was some contact before the ball got there. Referee was right on top of it, so no blood, no foul, evidently. Let's see. Little hand fighting there. Looks like Gaines may have gotten away from with one a little bit. But you talk about Joe Germain, Eli, of course, the, the great drive at the end of the 97 Rose Bowl to oh, beat yeah. Jake the Snake Plumber in Arizona State. Went on in 1998 to be the offensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Inside handoff, Terry Taylor gets a yard. If that, Robert Thomas comes up to make the tackle. Thomas right there, we told you he played for the Cowboys for four years, both as a fullback and a linebacker. Yeah, Thomas actually made the block that freed Emmett Smith up to break the all-time rushing record, but was, was a, a player in the NFL to play linebacker, but has played both. Robert Thomas, he's a good one. 10 minutes, 49 seconds. Remaining in the half, you see it third and goal. Everybody's covered. Off the net, it is live, but it cannot be caught. Had Wilson Thomas, 84, come down with the football, it would have been a touchdown. Even on a pass play, it is live off the net, but they couldn't find it. Well, a couple things there. Real good coverage by the Georgia Force down the field. Jermaine had to hang on the ball. Outstanding protection from the Arizona offensive line to give Jermaine a chance to throw it off the net. So now Anthony Brenner is going to be attempting a field goal. It'll be a 23-yard attempt for Brenner. Certainly, this is reachable easily. And right down the middle, well, with a fudge factor to the side. Anyway, rack it up with three more points for Anthony Brenner, the 60-year AFLer out of East Carolina. Georgia up 14-10. On a beautiful night in Atlanta, Georgia up by four, 14-10, the AFL on FSN. Glad you're able to join us. Eli Gold, Dave Archer, Bo Estes, a 23-yard field goal by Anthony Brenner. Making this a four-point ball game. There is Brenner. He kicked for Arizona originally when they won the Arena Bowl in 97. Last year was with Colorado and the deep man Troy Bergeron had a few problems last week against Los Angeles in handling the kicks. Let's see how he does here. Tough play off the net. Find some running room. Bergeron. Spun down by Clarence Lawson at the 18-yard line, a 38-yard return. No problem in a super pickup in close off the net. Well, he had a tough play off the net. It looked like it caught the iron, the bottom part of the net, which is the toughest part. He was able to feel it after juggling a little bit, and it looked like Arizona got a little too close to him. He found a crease and then weaved his way up the field. Nice return. I'll tell you, he looks young. I was remarking earlier tonight, he looks so young, but obviously plays with a lot of confidence and has been making some tough plays. After last week, he said, I can play. And indeed, he does come back with a nice 38-yard return. From the 18, Kubiak. Finds a man on the right side, Todd Doxson, who goes inside the five to the three-yard line. Hunky Cooper on the stop defensively. Well, Doxson will be to the left of your screen here catches the little short route and then gets the first down and it's created because of Bergeron's clean release and his speed up the field drawing the defenders away and then Doxon catches the underneath pass. Todd's a five-year vet in this league played in New York under Todd Shell, who is now the coach at Arizona. Doxon in motion younger is the fullback. Everybody's coming into the corner nice fingertip grab Todd Doxon for the touchdown in the deep corner of the end zone Todd Doxon with the TD well Doxon's initial route just took him into the back of the end zone and then he stayed alive good protection by the Georgia force up front 
and Doxon just floated along that back line and a real good throw and a super catch. You said it. Fingertip grab. A two-play, 18-yard drive. That's typical of the AFL. Takes all of a minute and 34 seconds to complete. And the Nelson Garner extra point. Todd Doxon activated in time for this ball game. That sounds like one of the best moves thus far this week for Doug Plank. Welcome back, everybody, to the Phillips Arena, where Georgia has some momentum going. Hey, let's remind you that the Sports List is the show that counts down the 10 best and worst of anything and everything in sports. Monday, how about finding out the sexiest athletes in history? The Sports List with host Summer Sanders, Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on FSN. Join us as we find out where Dave Archer fits in the all-time sexiest athlete list. I don't think they go that far down. Probably not. I think uh, Summer Sanders deserves to be on that list. I know that. Mm. Hunky Cooper trying to get Arizona lit here. I'll tell you, Georgia has momentum. Their defense has two stops already, one interception, and at one point holding Arizona to a field goal in this league. That's a stop. You wonder if they try something squirrely here like an onside kick. It doesn't look like it as though the way Nelson Garner teed up the football. But in this league, we've seen games. Look at the game with the Indiana Firebirds. May they rest in peace. A game in which uh, Coach Daly tried seven onside kicks. Here's Hunky Cooper off the net. Needs 27 yards for the league record of all-time all-purpose yardage. Hunky to the 20. Hunky to the 25-yard line, and that's going to do it. That is going to be the Arena Football League record as he picks up 30 right there. Hunky Cooper picking up 30 yards and has just bypassed the legendary George LaFrance for all-time yardage in Arena Football League all-purpose history. So a nice honor right there for Hunky Cooper as he bypasses George LaFrance on the all-time numbers. Gatewood on the screen. He'll get a couple of yards to the 23-yard line. Kevin Gaines was there to make the stop. Trying to set up a quick screen to the outside with Burley blocking Gaines and give Gatewood some running room, but real good job of Gaines jumping around the Burley block to, to hold the plate as the two-yard game. So from the 23-yard line, Cooper will be at the top of your screen, the man in motion. They come underneath to the big man. Rumbling room as Kelvin Ingram picks up eight yards on his first reception of the year. Kelvin Ingram, the lineman from Oklahoma State, with three different tours of duty for the Arizona Rattlers. I'd love to see the big guys lumber like that. Well, this is how you slow down a pass rush. George had been getting after Jermaine. We talked about the pressure. So a little screen pass to him. And the big fella Ingram goes down and dishes out some punishment at the end of that run. Now let's see if he raises his hand. He does. So Ingram again says, I am the tight end. That A designates him as an eligible receiver and lets you know which linebacker can then blitz over the top off the fingertips of Burley. Burley couldn't quite hang on. Let's talk again, Dave, about the fact that when a lineman comes to the line of scrimmage, he puts his hand up to say, all right, I'm an eligible receiver. And in this league, that also lets you know which linebacker is allowed to blitz the guy diagonally across. And that, that's good for a game such as this. Well, certainly. And you have to declare, because the game is so fast, you need to declare to let people know who's available to run the route. And there you see Ingram again declaring at the tight end spot. Here's fourth down now. Jermaine Burley, first down yardage to the 15-yard line. They needed a yard, they picked up three. Willie Gary, the man who makes the tackle, but as Wes Fritz shows us, it is indeed a first down. 
The simple simple route to the wide side had Burley belly out from the slot position. Clear out route by Gatewood, and then Burley catches the first down throw. Inside of five minutes remaining until halftime. If you're new to this league, once we get to one minute remaining in this half and in the second half, the clock will stop as it does in the stadium play game on incompletions and the like. Wide open Burley down the right side to the goal line, and there's a flag on the play. Kevin Gaines, after the 13-yard pickup by Shia Burley. Looked like they might have got Gatewood on the inside trying to help and block. Mm -hmm. Might have got a hold on him. Of course, Burley is saying that there was also a face mask in there, and Wes Fritz is talking it over. Trying to make sure that he knows exactly what the officials saw. The back judge, James Cole, was there. Line judge, Dave Chesney. The umpire, Paul Ferking. Offensive pass interference number 17. Wow. Downfield blocking before the pass was called. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Well, Arizona's running a neat little combination of the wide side. They've got Gatewood outside. He runs a curl to the inside, and then Burley bellies to the outside and sets up. And I thought it might have been a hold. I did not see the pass interference prior to because that was a tough angle for us to see it there. Todd Shell in the ear of the line judge. I don't think Todd's not either. Dave Chesney says, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Quick release behind Gatewood. Gatewood cut in. The pass went out. Little miscommunication there between quarterback and wide receiver, plus Younger and Thomas and Demery, they had some pretty good pressure. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. The pressure, I think, was maybe even more so than the route. I think Jermaine was trying to get the ball to Gatewood on the slant, and the ball was thrown behind him because of that pressure as you talked about. Randy Gatewood. Listening in, Doug Plank. Don't have many plays that are designed for second and 20. I don't care where you're playing, <laughs> under a roof or outdoors. Hunky Cooper in motion. Jermaine looks his way, comes underneath the Gatewood on a crossing route for the first down, or excuse me, for the game down to the 10. A 15-yard pickup on the play. They need five more, but a nice big chunk of that yardage. Picked up by Gates. Well, and this play is created by Cooper. Watch Cooper, 14 there in the middle of the field. And he clears it out. Yeah, he brought a lot of defense for with Gatewood him. For Gatewood, takes it through the middle, and then Gates has to come in and make the play. The interesting thing is the man that he grabbed, or the man who followed him, Ricky Parker, a former Arizona Rattler. So he knew in his mind that when that play goes, Hunky's going to be the receiver. He cleared out. The third and six. Jermaine going down first sack of the ball game. Gillis Wilson from Southern. First sack of the ball game, first of the year from him. It'll be a loss of eight on the play. Well, we, we had a chance to talk to Doug Blank prior to the game, and he said he thought the most important part of the game for his defense was he needed to get pressure on Joe Germain. And there it is. Gillis Wilson comes through. They've had pressure on him the, most of the night, and they finally come up with a sack. So now from midfield, they're going to line up an Anthony Brenner field goal attempt. We have an equipment timeout for Georgia. It's fixed. We're ready to go. A 32-yard field goal attempt. Troy Bergeron was just uh, readjusting his equipment. Now, he is deep. Remember that a missed field goal can be returned off the net, folks. Now that's why Bergeron is deep. But there'll be no return of that one. Nothing but points for the Arizona Rattlers with 2.01 to go in the half. This is going to be a good one. 21-13, Georgia. Welcome back to the Phillips Arena here in Atlanta. There's the story in numbers. Hey, folks, a week from tomorrow, next Sunday, NASCAR on Fox returns with the 47th running of the Great American Race. Our NASCAR coverage begins with the Daytona 500 next Sunday in high definition, only on Fox. 
They'll run for the Bud Pole tomorrow to set the front row for the Great American Race. One of the great weeks in all of NASCAR. Speed weeks mm -hmm. taking you all the way into the Great American Race. First complete coverage coming up throughout the week. Hope you can tune in. Troy Bergeron. Wide receiver and cornerback back in his high school days and didn't play collegiately. Anthony Brenner taking over from Chris Saylor, who was released as the place kicker for Arizona. And you talked about Bergeron. Bergeron's a guy that came in and completely surprised the force personnel people. They timed him in the 40, he ran 4-3-5. They said, wait a minute, do that again. He ran 4-3-8. Folks, that's flying. As opposed to someone like myself with a time with a sand dial. Excuse me, folks. Or a sundial or anything else of that nature. Here is Bergeron. Running room. The kicker is the man he's got to beat. He runs him over. But Brenner acting like a speed bump does get the touchdown saving tackle. Well, you see that burst of speed. Just talked about how quick this kid is. Found a little crease on the sideline. A real good tackle by Brenner because this is the touchdown. You see the burst as he finds the edge, and there he goes. But Brenner is right there, and a lot of times the kickers get roughed up a little bit, but that was a heck of a tackle by Brenner. Tell you, very often you will see in this league a kicker in the top 10 in tackles on the roster. Remy Hamilton, the fine kicker for Los Angeles. Indeed, one of those. He's always around number eight or number nine in team tackles. Over the top, Bergeron, the fade route, touchdown! What a nice play. They burned Clarence Lawson. They themselves got burned on that last weekend. They've got it perfected here tonight. Well, Lawson's trying to come up and challenge Bergeron. Bergeron is the loop motion man coming from the weak side, short side to the wide side, and he just avoids the jam. And all Kubiak does is just lay it up. Watch the jam here. Watch the avoid right there. Lawson trying to get on him, but it's over That's at that point. That's the one-minute warning. We're going to kick the extra points and have the one-minute break. When we have that break, Georgia has two timeouts remaining. Arizona, three. A one-play, 21-yard scoring drive. It takes a minute off the clock. And the extra point try as Troy Bergeron the rookie from MTSU, Middle Tennessee State, gets the points. Now the extra point try by the veteran Nelson Garner. Got it. And we have come to the one-minute warning. As soon as we come back, the clock will begin to stop on incompletions and so on. Lots of points usually score in the final minute of each half. On Joby. Welcome back to Atlanta. Troy Bergeron likes the numbers he sees on the scoreboard. He's got, you see, three receptions, 43 yards, and his quarterback, Jim Kubiak, 9 of 11, 113 yards and two touchdowns. Now, again, in this league, Dave, this would be a perfect time to try an onside kick. They talked about the minute, last minute of the half yep. is one of the longest parts of this football game. And the clock will stop. There's Hernandez Hunky Cooper, the Arena Football League's all-time, all-purpose yardage leader. Earlier tonight, bypassed the legendary George LaFrance, who had played with Detroit and Tampa Bay. The man has taken a pounding over the years, Hunky Cooper has. Folks on this field of this dimension, 8,500 receiving yards. That in its own right remarkable. And here he comes off the net again. He spins around to the 13-yard line. Willie Gary stops him after the 18-yard run back. To just give you an idea, Dave, and, and you, you and I were talking about this last night over dinner, you can fit four of these football fields onto a regular NFL or college gridiron. 
So multiply the players, eight against eight times four. It's like having 32 on 32 playing at Sun Devil Stadium or at the Georgia Dome. That's crowded. It's crowded, you get that right. Zaya Burley, the motion man, Jermaine in trouble. Underneath, finds Wilson Thomas. Thomas to the 10 and stripped up by Ricky Parker. Nice release to Wilson Thomas, a 30-yard pickup. Well, Wilson Thomas was the forgotten man by the Georgia 4 secondary. They just let Thomas float underneath. He's going to come from the left of your screen. He seemed to just float over to the right side, and Jermaine buys a little time, moves out of the pocket, and now Thomas is on the run. What a great target at 6'6", 195. And yes, if you are a college football fan, that is indeed the same Wilson Thomas who led Nebraska in receiving in both his junior and senior years. A tall Cornhusker. Inside handoff, Kerry Taylor, touchdown! The inside handoff, and it was though the blue sea parted right there. A yeah, real good job in that offensive front. Hutch, Gaines, and Tucker. Mark Tucker threw a beauty of a yes, block. Yes, he did. He created a nice crease in there, and real good running by Taylor. Kerry Taylor, 10 yard on the run. Made it look easy. Anthony Brenner to attempt the extra points. And with 20 and a half seconds remaining until halftime, we are going to take a break. A two-play, 36-yard scoring drive. It took just 39 seconds to complete. There's more coming up. It was Welcome back to Atlanta. That was the combination right there. Mark Tucker, 56, blocking for 44, Taylor right, with a touchdown. Right there's Mark Tucker. He's going to get a block here, and then he's going to step up and seal the other block. Let's look at it. Mark Tucker, the veteran out of USC, saying step to seal that inside, and there's Taylor right off his rear end to stick it in the end zone. Real good job by the veterans. Super run right there for Kerry Taylor behind Mark Tucker, number 56. Now... What are your strategies? Georgia is expecting, again, an onside kick possibility here. With the exception of the deep man Bergeron, everybody else is creeping in on Brenner. Doug Plank says, I've seen this before. <laughs> Doug was there before with Arizona. Let's see. They're going to kick it away. It's playable out of the slack net. To the 10 with 16 and a half seconds to go. 17 yard return, Wendell Gaines on the tackle. Much better job by Arizona that time on the kick coverage group is staying in their lanes. And every guy, everybody that runs down on the kick is assigned a certain part of the field and run down and stay in the lanes. And they did a real good job of that there. Georgia does have two timeouts remaining. Arizona has all three of theirs. Bergeron will be the motion man. Final seconds, first half, Kubiak. Bergeron sliding grab down at the 17-yard line. Terrence Joseph touches him there to stop the clock with 10 seconds to go. A nice sliding 18-yard pickup. Real good shot, throw it to the wide side. Again, let Bergeron run to the football away from the defender. And now timeout. Timeout, Georgia, their first of the half. That's a 30-second timeout. So Georgia being the recipient of that timeout. Nice play by Troy Bergeron right there. Yeah, Coach Tan, you see him there. He's right here talking to the referee. He thinks that Troy Bergeron catches this ball and before he's touched down, rolls out of bounds. And he didn't want to have to burn a timeout there. He wanted to get the out of bounds play, but the referees didn't listen to that one. There is Steve Tun. Georgia plays at Las Vegas next week. While the Rattlers return home to the Purple Palace to play host to the Colorado Crush. For Georgia, behind their game at Las Vegas, they'll go, as you see, to Austin. 
home against Columbus before going cross country to the Nassau Coliseum. Lots of road games upcoming for the force. Of course, a good bit of that coverage will be right here on FSN. Trying to keep pace. Orlando won again, so they're on top of the division, trying to keep pace with the Orlando Predators. Bergeron, four receptions, 66 yards for Georgia. That's he. Nobody picks up Hutch off the corner. Anthony Hutch on the sack. A loss of eight on the play. Kubiak said, where did time he out. come from? Georgia, their last time out of the half. Well, it's a big play by Hutch, too, because Bergeron, wow. again, wins against press coverage. See, it's a slide protection by the by the offensive line. They just do not pick the fullback. Should have stepped probably to the right side. Thomas yeah. should have stepped to the right side to take Hutch. He did not do that. Hutch unabated to the quarterback. And a good play by Hutch because Bergeron wins again down through the middle. And Kubiak had a shot for a touchdown. When Jermaine Smith slid left, that's all she wrote. Second sack of the year for Anthony Hutch. And, of course, I've seen him for many years. He has great quickness anyway, even for a guy 6'3", 295. So now with five seconds to go, a field goal attempt of 40 yards to end this half. Nelson Garner. He's hit him this year from 33. This one from 40 is no good. And wide left, that is going to do it. The quarter is end. And Wes Fritz said no wide left. Garner thought it was good. Garner said, didn't it look good to you? And the officials are going to talk it over. After further consulting with the back judge, it's good. Wow. Well, you got to give it to the officials. They talked it over. They at first blush, we had all up here said why, but let's check the video again. Clearly, it must have just caught the corner. Yep. Yeah, no question. Perfect and camera angle there. No, he says it's good. West says, uh-uh. But the officials talk it over. So a two-play scoring drive, 21 seconds. Official Steve Tunn knew it was good. Whoa. And that is it. We have come to halftime. 31-20, Georgia up. That great camera work there. We were right on top of it. We uh, got the angle that we needed. I'm ready. So let's go downstairs to Bo. All right, thanks a lot. Coach, uh, obviously a controversial call at the end of the first half there. How did you see that last field goal? Well, I thought it hooked out. It was, it was a uh, referee's call. Unless the back judge out, well, he was under the other goal post. So I don't know what the deal is. I thought it was a referee's call. What uh, kind of adjustments are down? A, are you down uh, 11 and a half? What adjustments will you make? Well, we just got to start making some stops and taking care of the football. You know, we turned the ball over. You know, we had three opportunities to get off the field on defense, and we didn't make the play. So we just got to start making some plays. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Eli? All right, guys, thank you. Georgia in the first half, five possessions, four touchdowns and a field goal. They are up by 11 at the half. And coming up at halftime, a whole lot coming your way, including a visit with a rather gruff guy in Chicago. I think you'll enjoy it. We're back to Atlanta after this. A beautiful night in Atlanta, Georgia. The Arizona Rattlers and the Georgia Force meeting for only the second time ever in Arena Football League history. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the AFL. On FSN, I'm Eli Gold, along with longtime pro quarterback Dave Archer. Here we are, just week three of the season. Already injuries, the story for Arizona. Quarterback Cedric Bonner, out. Joe Germain is his replacement. Fullback Bo Kelly is out. Replaced by Frank Trentadu, who remarkably broke a toe last night at the hotel. He is now out, replaced by a lineman, Antoine Scott, going at full bar. Well, one man's injury is another man's opportunity. Joe Germain and Antoine Scott will get that shot tonight. Germain, only six games in the AFL. Now, as we mentioned, you, of course, played much in the quarterback role over the years. We're seeing these teams now dealing with new head coaches. Todd Schell at Arizona, Doug Plank, a first-time head coach with Georgia. How tough is that for the players? Well, a lot of optimism when you get a new coach, but a lot of anxiety, too. Coaches don't know too much about their players. Players aren't real sure about their coaches, either. 
third member of our broadcast crew this evening, Bo Estes, standing by downstairs with Georgia coach Doug Plank. All right, thanks so much, Eli, and coach, thank you for joining us. Obviously, one of the big storylines coming in this week, you're facing your old team. What's it going to be like, and is there any edge at all of knowing these guys as players? Well, I think anytime you know the players personally like I do, I think there is somewhat of an edge. Uh, as far as the, the fact that I'm playing the Arizona Rattlers, it only matters here in pregame, talking and seeing a few of the players. Once the game starts, this is going to be any other opponent. Uh, obviously, last week you gave up a little bit of a lead. What was the practices like this week? I know it must have been a bit intense. Well, it wasn't a little bit of a lead. We had a big lead. And one of the things that I have to be responsible as head coach, when we have momentum, we cannot give up momentum. We cannot make mistakes. And that's what I told the team this week. It's not just the physical aspect. We have to be mentally sharp, and that's what it's going to take to win this game. How important is getting off to a fast start out here today? Well, I think it's very important because especially teams that are on the road, like the Rattlers right now, it's very difficult once you get, get behind in another team's ballpark to try to come back. So it's important for us to go out here and get a lead early and maintain it. The teams first met in May of 2002. They renew acquaintances here tonight. The AFL on FSN is coming your way from Phillips Arena in Atlanta. The kickoff when we come back. Ready for a more. Welcome back, everybody. The AFL on FSN coming to you from Phillips Arena here in downtown Atlanta. Eli Gold, Dave Archer, that man is Todd Schull. He was the Rattlers defensive coordinator back in the early to mid 90s. Won the Western Division title as head coach at San Jose. Won two Eastern Division titles as the head coach for New York. Now is calling the shots at Arizona. There, of course, Doug Plank back to us. Doug was the defensive coordinator under Danny White with the Arizona Rattlers for many years. Now takes over as the head coach here. I said, how tough becoming the head coach? He goes, man, he goes, the administrative stuff and all that other stuff. He said, takes a lot to learn. Well, you mentioned that in the differences, even though there are two new coaches for two different teams now, Todd Shell has been a coach at three different places, a head coach. He understands the administrative stuff, the things that he has to get done outside the game. Doug's still trying to figure that stuff out. That is Hunky Cooper, deep man for Arizona, just 27 yards away from becoming the all-time number one all-purpose yardage man in league history. He could well get that record tonight as Nelson Garner checks his teammates, gets set to kick it away. The veteran kicker from James Madison has had a bit of a knee injury early this year. He'll launch that one past and off the net. An ideal kick off the metal. Hunky is pulled down at the one yard line. And though he goes back into the end zone, it'll be a touchback as the ball did hit the far wall. So with Derek Lee on the tackle, the football comes out to the five. There is a flag on the play as we check the Arizona offense. Again, Joe Germain, only his second start. And there's that fine offensive line, Hutch Sharp and Gaines. We had a defender grabbing the face mask, so that's a 10 yard penalty. So you heard Wes Fritz, the referee, explaining that you had the touchback as the ball hit the wall, then the face mask penalty. So Georgia will be backing up a bit defensively as Arizona will start with the football first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. As you see, the Rattlers, their uniforms are the same, but that's about it from the Danny White days. Lots of changes. Like there, Joe Germain mishandling the snap though he does cover it up. Georgia's defense led by Jermaine Smith, they were ready to pounce on the football. And I'll tell you something, Dave, that's a rather imposing unit right there. They wanted to get after the passer tonight, Eli. That was one of their main goals, was to rattle Joe Jermaine early in the game, get after him. The remainder of the defense includes Ricky Parker, number 20, a former Arizona Rattler now with the force. Only a loss of a yard on the play. Saya Burley, the motion man, they look off of him, and that one launches away with a flag on the play into the Georgia bench. So penalty numbers have been up just a little bit here in the early season. Referee Wes Fritz indicating five yards on the defense. An illegal defense, as the signal is, for a linebacker out of the box. There are certain very clear-cut constraints, Dave, 
The linebackers just can't come blitzing and charging from all angles in this league. Already two penalties on Georgia. They had 10 last week, so it's been a problem for this ball club. Doug Plank told us they need to be a bit more disciplined. That's Derek Lee, wide receiver linebacker for Georgia. Jermaine Gatewood, first down completion down to the 15 to the tackle, Kevin Gaines, a 15-yard pickup. Gatewood, the league's Iron Man of the Year in 2003. Offensively as a receiver, defensively as a DB, one of the best in the league. Yeah, he really is, and he's on the outside, and Jermaine realizes he's got a corner off, defensive back off, he's just going to throw the ball out there and get it to Gatewood and let Gatewood make a play for him. Gatewood last year, a solid receiver, already this year, number two on the ball club. Burley, the motion man. There's Terry Taylor, fullback, inside the 10, down to the 9-yard line. A pickup of seven on the play. Anthony Hutch with a nice lead block. And there's a pretty good matchup right there. We talked about Gatewood winning the league's Iron Man of the Year a couple of years back. And unheralded Derek Lee, a rookie from Tennessee Tech, has burst on the scene for Georgia. He really has. He stepped up, and even though he's a rookie, he's showing some leadership for this ball club. Went to camp with the New York Jets last season. Hand off, Kerry Taylor with flags down, gets to the eight-yard line. Gillis Wilson, second-year lineman from the Southern University campus in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, makes the tackle, but likely a hold on the perimeter. Kerry Taylor, again, if you're just joining us, he and Antoine Scott will split fullback duties here this evening for Arizona as Wes Fritz gets more airtime early than does Bo Estes, our sideline man. <laughs> so the hole brings the mark off the other way. Again, there's Kerry Taylor in the background there, number 44, out of the University of Massachusetts. He was a Division I AA All-America and was with UMass when they won the one AA championship in 1998. He plays tonight, as does Antoine Scott at fullback. We mentioned it earlier. Bo Kelly already banged up, not on the trip. And then Frank Trent to do in a bizarre accident, stubbing his toe, breaking his toe last night. Jermaine Gatewood to the six-yard line. 13-yard pickup. We've seen two throws already that have been high from Jermaine, but this time he's bailed out. His receiver goes up high and makes the play. Gatewood goes up and makes the catch over the middle. Team, climb the ladder, use the hand, super catch, bail your quarterback out, make a few plays for your quarterback, let him settle into the position. It'll be a third down up coming here and just about a yard. There's Gatewood breaking the huddle. He and Saya Burley are the two men to the left of your screen. They are the wide receivers out there. Taylor, the fullback, gets the toss, needs a yard for the first down. It's going to be close. Looks like Lee and Wilson come up to make the stop with Robert Thomas as well. The short side of the field in this league really gets short on you in a hurry. It'll be fourth down. Well, that 48-inch wall and keeping us from being able to see exactly what was spotted until he took it out to the near hash mark, and he's come up just a short fourth now, down situation. Fourth down in this league, you must either go for it or try a field goal. You cannot punt, though obviously you necessarily wouldn't even in the stadium played game in this scenario but you must either go for it or try a field goal. Jermaine to try and get the yard. It looks as though he gets a yard and a half, maybe two. Jermaine Smith was there to make the tackle for the Georgia Force. If you're new to this league, let's give you a look at some of the differences that you might be encountering. Eight versus eight with six players going both ways. The walls are live in the field of play, but as you see, dead in the end zone. And on down the line. Yes, you can catch the ball off the net. That will be a touchdown. Man in motion. That, too, is very noticeable. Seventh play of the drive, Jermaine. Out route, Saya Burley, touchdown. Saya Burley, who was the number one receiver last year, made the out cut against Gary, and no way they could stop that combination for the first score of the night for the Arizona Rattlers. Yeah, real good job by Gatewood clearing it out, and Burley breaks to the flat. 
Real good throw from Jermaine here. Gets it out in front of the receiver so he can turn and get to get the end zone. It'll be a seven-play scoring drive, 35 yards in five minutes and 15 seconds. Anthony Brenner out of the hold of Keatwood to attempt the extra point, which is up and good. And the Rattlers on the boy, drawing first blood here this evening. The AFL on FSN. So glad you're with us from the Phillips Arena in Atlanta. Our coverage continues in a moment. I will not be a friend. The Phillips Arena in Atlanta, where the Arizona Rattlers have taken the 7 to nothing lead. Joe Germain, 3 of 3 passing, 32 yards and a touchdown as Anthony Brenner gets set to kick it away. Saya Burley on the receiving end of that touchdown reception, his seventh grab of the year. There's Jermaine being talked to by Cedric Bonner, the gentleman there with the baseball cap and the great T-shirt. He is the veteran all-world performer in this league, out injured with a right knee injury. He's on injured reserve, but he's talking with Jermaine. As this one is underway, kicked off the net. Here's Bergeron, six yards deep. Bergeron to the 12-yard line. That's where Georgia will go to work. A 17-yard run back, Kerry Taylor with the tackle on special teams. And here's the offense unit that you'll be seeing. Jim Kubiak is the quarterback. Outstanding in 2003. Missed all of last year with a herniated disc in his neck. Jermaine Smith, very good tight end, even better on the defensive line. Robert Thomas is the fullback. Bergeron in motion. Quick slant to lead. And he's got the grab and a seven-yard pickup with Randy Gatewood, the special teams and offensive star, who is an Iron Man, making the tackle. Arizona's defense, Nakia Adderson. He and Gaines, he and Wendell really anchor that defensive line. Tom Pace. Gatewood in the middle, Clarence Lawson bracketing that fine defensive unit. Quick screen, Bergeron, nobody's fooled. As up comes the defense and drills him, it'll be a loss of two. Clarence Lawson is an outstanding veteran, seven years in this league, nothing much fools him. That's uh, a spectacular play by Lawson. It's a quick screen to the outside to Bergeron, the 4 3 sprinter, and he avoids the block and he splits through and makes the play for a loss. Outstanding play by Lawson to read the play and then come up and make the hit. Lawson was in the doghouse a bit last year. Just didn't play much under Danny White. Don Shelva was always liked him. He's a physical player, a good cover man. And he said, forget the old stuff. You're out of the doghouse. Over the top. Nicely floated out to Bergeron with the defense of Terrence Joseph gamely trying to hang on. A 28-yard pickup for the Georgia Force. Nice touch pass. A couple of them got Kubiak in trouble last week, not tonight. No, not tonight, and certainly not on this plate. Joseph comes up and tries to challenge. They try to jam the receivers, and Bergeron is able to avoid, get up the field, and then, as you talked about, Eli, the nice touch to get him an opportunity to catch the football. Bergeron's a great story. We'll talk more about that young man who didn't play any college football. Here's a first and goal. Newly acquired Todd Dotson is on the field now. Flags on the play. Too many guys moved that time. It's kind of like your old days up in the CFL there, partner. <laughs> Had people going in all sorts of directions. Prior to the snap, encroachment, contact by the nose guard, 91. Half the distance remains first down. Penalty on Nakia Adderson as we check in with Bo Estes. In as much as he's breaking out this year, he still wants to improve, and that's why he was out here an hour and a half working on kickoff returns, trying to get the ball off the net, trying to perfect that part of his game. Robert Thomas lumbers in for the touchdown behind the key block of Derry Myricks on the right side of the line. Robert Thomas, the second-year vet from Henderson State, picks up his second rushing touchdown of the year. Well, this is part of what Doug Plank, the head coach of the Georgia Force, wanted to establish was a physical part of the game. When you run the football in the Arena League, that means coming off and hit somebody in the mouth. And that's exactly what the Force did up front. And Thomas gets in the end zone. Four plays, 38 yards. 
two minutes and 50 seconds. And now Nelson Garner, who has played with Arizona in the past, among other teams in this league, drills the extra point. But Robert Thomas, behind the block of Derry Myricks at the right side, turns the corner. We are all knotted up. Middle of the first quarter, seven all in Atlanta. Robert Thomas, the four-year Dallas Cowboy, has tied this game at seven. Hey, folks, this week, ACC hoops return when NC State takes on Georgia Tech. Coverage begins tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain. It's right here on FSN. Eli Gold, Dave Archer, Bo Estes, and our FSN crew with you here at the Phillips Arena in downtown Atlanta. Nelson Garner getting set to kick it away. Again, remember, Hunky Cooper, the deep man for Arizona, 27 yards shy of the league's all-time, all-purpose yardage record held by a man who was a legend in this league, George LaFrance. Does 27 yards is what Hunky Cooper needs to break that record. Remember, you play the ball off the net. Hunky has trouble finding the handle. And that will be a touchback. In this league, you must attempt to run the ball out of the end zone. You just can't take a knee. And if you're downed as he was there, the football comes out to the five-yard line. And that's where... Offside, 21 on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the five. First down, Arizona. Kevin Gaines a bit over anxious on the kick. I thought that was pretty good coverage. He evidently got an extra start. Yep. But, uh, Jermaine Younger was down there, as well as was Myricks. Good hustle by the kickoff team for Georgia. Remember Jermaine, the quarterback for Arizona, three of three, 32 yards in the first possession. Antoine Scott, the fullback now, as they go complete to Tom Pace out across the 20 for a first down. Tom Pace. Tackled by Ricky Parker. Hunky Cooper, of course, as we said, all-purpose yardage. Finding himself in that battle right there. Barry Wagner still playing with the San Jose Sabercats. Great receiver, Eddie Brown with the Firebirds for years. Germain. Over top, nobody's there, intercepted by Ricky Parker. Parker brings it back out as he steps out of his football shoe and brings it back seven yards out to the two-yard line. You don't need shoes to pull him down like that. Ricky Parker, who played for Arizona the last five years, that was not a well-thrown football. And Ricky Parker baits the quarterback a little bit. Jermaine thinks he's got the shot down the middle of the field to Burley. But Parker just floated back in that middle fielder position to get the interception and the defensive stop, which is what this game's about. You can make some defensive stops, you have a chance to win a football game. So Jermaine throwing his third interception of the year. Cedric Bonner began the year at quarterback, got hurt. Jermaine started last week in the loss at Orlando, excuse me, the home game loss to Orlando, 51-40, and starts here tonight. Now Kubiak. The out crowd off the fingertips of the intended receiver, but they'll say Chris Johnson already out of bounds, and that will not. Ball is rolled incomplete. So Chris Johnson out of Georgia Southern. But it looked like this ball might have gone into the crowd and careened back in, and Johnson made a heck of a catch on it, but. As we said, the rules, the walls are live. They can catch the ball off the wall, and that's exactly what Johnson was saying happened, but uh, the referees have the final call, and that did not agree. The fullback is Jermaine Younger. Parker, Bergeron, and Johnson are the receivers. Bergeron in motion. Looking for him, it's overthrown and complete. Troy Bergeron, we mentioned earlier, he didn't even play any college football. First signed with Auburn, then went to Middle Tennessee, 
at that point went to the Arena Football 2, AF2, the developmental league, where he played with the Columbus War Dogs a season ago before moving on to the AFL. You got to credit Jerry Sharp. Good pressure on the inside. Got in Kubiak's face, and Kubiak threw the ball high to Bergeron. Time out. Georgia, their first of the half. So Georgia is going to take a timeout right here with 3.19 remaining in the opening quarter. We're tied at seven after a turnover in Atlanta. At Gem Sports, we know it's all here. They're excited. They love it here at the Phillips Arena. Tied at seven in the opening quarter, Arizona and Georgia. Hey, folks, if you like what you're seeing here this evening, don't forget to tune in to the AFL on NBC. Coming up Sunday, regional coverage. Columbus at Dallas, Nashville at Philadelphia. Be a good game. Chicago and the Colorado Crush. New Orleans home against the Sabercats. Just check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Well over 100 Arena Football League games will be televised this season in the combination efforts of FSN and NBC. Here's a third down play now for Kubiak and the Georgia Force. Looking towards Johnson who will jump and dive to make the first down reception. They'll give him the 19-yard line. 27-yard pickup beating Clarence Lawson. Nicely thrown that time. Again, Arizona coming up and challenging, and Johnson gets inside. And nice touch throw from Kubiak. What he does, he throws it to the wide side of the field and just lets his receiver run to the football. Had it let it go well before Johnson came out of the break. So a big third down play there. Sets it up first and 10, as you see, on the Arizona 19. Jermaine Younger, the fullback. He'll get the handoff. Younger inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. A seven-yard pickup before Clarence Lawson makes the stop on Jermaine Younger's seventh year out of Utah State. He is a true power kind of running back. He'll just carry the pile. He really is, and he started his career as a linebacker. Actually was one of my teammates in Ottawa in the Canadian League. Right. Tough football player, and he's playing both linebacker and fullback. Played with the Toronto Argonauts, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and with Brother Archer in Ottawa. As the officials now come in and want to reset the football, and actually are asking for a new football to be inserted. How many guys did you have in motion in a CFL game? All you had to do is have people on the line of scrimmage. You, you could have as many as you wanted. Looks like everybody yeah. was moving, yeah. Not quite that luxurious in the AFL. Johnson in motion. But there were also guys moving at the line of scrimmage, and that is not legal in re regardless of what league you're in. Little procedure penalty. The indication against the Georgia Force. Jermaine Younger, of whom we were speaking moments ago, getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar there. <laughs> Decided to give back some of that run he just had. Mm -hmm. Steve Tunn is the gentleman on the right. He is the offensive coordinator for the Georgia Force, talking with the quarterback, Jim Kubiak. Tunn is an outstanding coach, well thought of. Done a super job with this young receiver core. Several rookies playing for this team. Georgia already with four penalties, a loss of 25 yards. Kubiak has time to Ricky Parker, and he gets down to about the eight-yard line, maybe the seventh. Nice patient work that time. A nine-yard pickup, Justin Taplin was the cover man. Real good job of Arizona trying to mix up coverage. This time Kubiak sorts it out. No press coverage, people playing off, dumps the ball off to Parker, he gets the first down. Now a first and goal. Football is at the seven yard line. Parker, Bergeron, Johnson. Be wide to the top of your screen. He's the motion man. Johnson fights to the one. Reaches, but it's too late. 
It'll be six-yard pickup. Terrence Joseph with a nice touchdown-saving tackle on that one in the final minute of the opening quarter. Real good read by Johnson this time. Eli spies the zone, just sits down, and presents a nice target to his quarterback, Kubiak, and Kubiak is on the money with the throw. Super defense on the part of the Rattlers. Now, as we are within, as you see, the final 15 seconds of this opening period of play. Younger is the fullback. Johnson in motion. Here's Younger. Is he going to get there? No. He is to the goal line, but he is not in. Jerry Sharp, number 55 for Arizona. You see him right there. That is he the end of the first quarter. Underneath the pile and put everybody up as the quarter has come to a close. So one period complete, a five-yard Jermaine to Burley pass, and a four-yard run by Robert Thomas. That's how we got the 7-7.